Well, good morning again, Life First Church family and friends. We're so glad to have you with us this morning. And as pastor of Life First Church, I'm just going to say it for, for all of us here. We're, we're in a season of just feeling immensely blessed. I mean, you, many of you have heard the story about how we were able to acquire this building and all that God has done for us, how he's protected us over these past 16 months. And I'm so proud to say that, you know, although so many people and we, we don't want to, you know, o overlook anyone, but you know, and we recognize so many people have been afflicted by the COVID-19 virus and hundreds of thousands ha have, have died because of this virus. But we just feel so blessed here at Life Forest Church that zero, zero of our members have reported that uh, they had contracted the coronavirus. And so I just think that's amazing to say that we had zero cases of COVID-19 within our church and it's all about being obedient. And I think we're in a season now that God is honoring that obedience we had. Not only did we obey him, but we obeyed the laws of the land as well. And God saw that. He's like, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to honor that. And so I'm just so grateful. And he's honoring that. And he's blessing us tremendously. And I I'm just, just so excited to see where God takes us over these next few months as we prepare to relaunch, as we get ready for our grand reopening, celebrating our two-year anniversary, and just seeing the future growth that that's about to happen here at life for church so get on board and, and if, if you if you're just checking us out or maybe you're just supporting us online we invite you if you're anywhere within driving distance of sacramento we invite you to join this team we invite you to join this family of friends that we call life for church be a part of our launch team join one of our life groups and look, we, you may live in the Bay Area and you, you, you may be telling yourself, oh, if only I live closer, I, I would definitely be a part of, of, of Life Words. Don't let that be an excuse because we're going to have a, an, an online campus where well, we have an online campus and you could be a part of that. And those Sundays where you can get up here to Sacramento, of course, you're more than welcome to fellowship and, and, and worship with us. But even when you can, there are going to be so many opportunities for you to still be a connected member of Life Words Church via our life groups, via our online campus and so many other opportunities we believe that through our life groups and through our online campus in different locations, you know, with people watching in different cities and different states, we believe that we're going to be able to launch satellite campuses in all these areas where people are watching. So maybe you're watching Sunday after Sunday in Vallejo, or maybe you're watching Sunday after Sunday in Los Angeles, or maybe you're watching Sunday after Sunday in Utah, Texas, Florida, and Georgia. Our goal is to make sure that there's a LifeWord satellite campus to where it's a virtual campus to where you and other members of LifeWord Church that you play a major role in building in your area can come together and do life together. What we're doing here in Sacramento, we want to do in your city as well. So join us because God has given us a big vision and I know he's going to allow us to see it come to pass very, very, very soon. So get on board and join us today. But I'm just going to go ahead and dig into this uh, part four of our series. I hope that you've been enjoying this series. I want to believe, but, and uh, I'm going to be wrapping up this series today. And I really hope that today's message, I, I, I believe I saved the, the best for last. And I pray that during this series that, you know, we've cleared up some of the distorted views that many of us or those who want to believe but don't or, or, or just have some uh, hesitations about believing. I hope we cleared up some of those distorted views of who God really is instead of how we portrayed him to be or, or how we've you know distorted that view ourselves and if you've been with us here at life words for any amount of time and if you had any conversation with me you know i like to have fun you know i like to joke you know i like to make sure that i'm laughing and other people are laughing and you know that's what we that, that's what we do here at life words so that's part of our culture here is to have fun, laugh, and, and be a little bit lighthearted. But I just want to tell you that today in this message, I'm going to be a little bit more serious because I'm going to talk about most likely the biggest obstacle 
for those that don't believe or those who want to believe, but, and I want to start off by sharing just a little, a uh, quick story. A couple years ago after I, I moved back home to, to California, I uh, bumped into an old childhood friend and a as we were talking, I guess he may have saw, you know, on social media, you know, some things about me and he said, so you're a pastor now. And I could tell that the conversation was about to take a, a complete shift. And so I just nodded my head and so I said, yes, I'm so excited that <clears throat> my wife and I will be launching Life Words Church in, in Sacramento. And, you know, you, you and your family, you're welcome to join us. Uh, we would love to have you, you know, just co come, come worship with us from, from time to time. And so he responded. It was very sincere and, and, and respectful. But he asked the question. The, probably one of the most popular questions that I get personally as a pastor from those who are who are either atheists or who don't believe but want to believe. This is the most popular question that I get. And he asked very sincerely, he said, Trey, how do you believe in a God who doesn't seem to care? And I, I'm always prepared for that question. Uh, early on, I was never <laughs> prepared for that question. But after a few years now, I've, I've, I've gotten myself prepared to be ready to answer that question. And so he continued by saying, you know, no disrespect, but how, how do you believe in a God who just doesn't seem to care? And when you call on him, it just seems that he's ignoring you. And, and even for myself, you know, Trey, I, you know me. I, I grew up in church. I never missed a Sunday. Uh, I, I even got married in the church and my, two of my children were even christened in a church. But after a few years, he told me, he said that after a few years, my brother, he was hit, hit by a drunk driver and now he'll never walk again. And he was in a hospital for six months and we prayed to God, asking God to allow him to walk again. But now he's confined to a wheelchair for the rest of his life. I prayed to God, Trey, about, about my mother. She was diagnosed with cancer. And I told God, I said, God, if you hear me, if, if you heal my mother, I'll go to, back to church. I'll, I'll trust you. I'll believe in you. I'll be, I'll be a full-fledged Christian, whatever it is. But then my mother died, he said. So, Trey, how do you believe, how do you trust in a God who just doesn't seem to care about the people that he claims to love? And for many of us, you know, we, 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 it seems that on a daily basis, we get notifications on our phone uh, from a news app that's telling us about there's been another mass shooting or there's been a, a, another uh, racial, a, a racial hate event that, that's happened. Or, or, or there's a, a natural d disaster or, or some violent in, in some, some violence in, in some city. It seems like it's just a never-ending cycle of horrible things that are happening. And so we, we, we also see uh, once we watch the news or, or we turn on our TV or even just scroll down social media, we see that someone has been abused, whether it's sexual or physical or emotional abuse. And we start just asking, why is this happening? Why is this happening? And then even for you, you're doing your best. You're, you're, you're raising your children. But maybe some of you, you didn't want to be alone, but you are alone. And then for, for, for some of you, you, you're just asking yourself, look, I've been doing good, God. I, I've, been, I've been going to church. And even if it's virtual, I've been here Sunday after Sunday. I've been helping people. I've been serving. I've been giving. I've been doing all that you said in your word for me to do. But... I just can't seem to get ahead. It seems like everybody else is getting theirs. It seems like everybody else is winning. Everybody else is reaping blessings. But when I ask for mine, God, it just seems like it's not happening. So God, why are you allowing this to happen? And then we have to ask the question, if God can do something, why doesn't he? If God can do something about our situation, if God can do something about the natural disasters, if God can do something about the shootings, if God could do something about the hatred that seems to just be running rampant in our culture nowadays, if God can do something about it, why doesn't he? Why doesn't he? It just seems like he's a heartless God. And that's the title of today's message, a heartless God. 
And so many people, they feel that way. They just feel like, you know, it just seems like God is just heartless. I mean, we see what's happening. We see the hurt. We see children crying and, and for, for, for love and attention. We see people starving. We see people dying. We see people suffering. And God, you must see that too. But it just seems like you're heartless. And, I, and, and so, so many people are saying, you know what? I want to believe, but it seems like God doesn't care. So why would I believe? Why would I give? Why would I give my life to someone who just doesn't seem to care? And I want to let you know if you've ever felt that way. If you ever said, why, God, are you allowing this to happen? Or maybe you even went all out and just said, you know what? I can't believe because it just seems like God doesn't care. If you've ever felt that way, I want to let you know right now that you're not alone. You are not alone. Last week, I told you about David. David, a man after God's own heart, but he constantly cried out to God, God, are you listening? Do you even care? The, my enemies are chasing me down. They're, they're on my back. What is happening? God, I, do you even care about me? You said I'm, I'm, the, I'm the man after your own heart. It just seems like I can't I can't feel you. I cannot hear you when I need you. When my, my life is on the line, I just it just seems like you don't care. And there's another example in the Bible, Job. We look through the entire book of Job and we see that he was a righteous man. He, he loved God. He worshiped God. He he honored God. But once he was afflicted, he, we see in, 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 the, in the book of Job that he lost his house. He lost his wealth. He lost his business. And of course, he got sick and got boils all over his body. And then his friends became jerks to him. It, it, it just became a miserable point. And all throughout the book of Job, we hear him crying out to God. God, I need you. God, take this affliction away from me. God, where are you? God, I need you. And still in the midst of it, he still trusted God. And it got so bad that even Job's wife, the one who should have been at his side worshiping and, and, and praying along with him, she had gotten so fed up that she, chose, she told Job, why don't you just curse God and die? Why don't you just curse God out and just go ahead and die? Because this is just too much. You're trusting in someone who's putting you through so much pain. He sees your pain. He, you're crying out to him, but he doesn't seem to care. So, Job, why don't you just curse him and die? Because I don't want to hear it no more. And so I know that you don't want to go through this anymore because it's, I'm getting sick and tired of it. So I know you should be sick and tired of it. Why don't you just curse God and die? Another example is John, John the Baptist. And we all know John the Baptist, he, he, his only reason for existing was to prepare the way for Jesus. And as a matter of fact, he's Jesus's cousin. I mean, this is a blood relative. He was so tight with Jesus that as an unborn child, he leaped in his mother's womb just because he was in close proximity to an unborn Jesus. So this is somebody who surely, surely, if he needed Jesus, if he needed God, he had the VIP access. He had all the credentials. He had all the passes. He had everything that was needed in order to have a close and tight connection with God the Father. And it, 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 he, was, he was so well respected and so honored as, as someone who was close to God that people thought that he was the Messiah. Many times he was asked, are you the one? Because all the people that he converted uh, to have a belief in God, they asked him, are you the one? And he would tell them, "Uh, -uh don't follow me. Don't follow me. Follow Jesus because I'm unworthy to tie his sandals. Don't follow me, even though I baptized Jesus. Yeah, that was me, but I'm not the one you should follow. But I know him. He's my cousin. We're, we're just that close. And we know that later on, Paul, I'm sorry, John gets arrested. John gets arrested for, he was basically put in prison for doing what's right. He wasn't doing anything against the law. He was doing what's right. But as he went to prison, you know, Paul, I'm sorry, John, he was probably thinking to himself, you know what? I'll go to prison because I'm good because 
<laughs> Jesus, I, I know he's on he's on the case. He's on the job. So I, I'm just going to sit here for a little while because I know my cousin has my back. I know my cousin will come through. I, 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 I'm, I'm not worried right now. I'm, I'm not worried about any of this because I, if, it, if there's anybody who Jesus is going to come through for, oh, yeah, it's going to be me. And so a little time went by. Paul continued to be in, pr in prison. And I'm sorry, I keep saying Paul, but John, John, he, he, he waited in prison and then he waited some more and he waited some more and then more and more. And all of a sudden it got to a point where he was he probably hearing about Jesus performing miracles for strangers, but not performing a miracle in his life. And all of a sudden we know how John's story ended. Not only did he lose his job as the one who prepared the way for Jesus, but Jesus, but he actually he lost his head. John was beheaded. So we know how th this ended. So Jesus had the power to rescue John, but he didn't. God had the power to to open the, the, the prison gates for, for John, just like he did for Paul. He had that type of power, but he didn't do it. And so we could look at that story and we could say, well, huh, if God didn't do it for John, who was so close to his son, if God didn't do it for him, why would he do it for me? Why would he come through for me? Why would even he even hear my cries? How, why would he even you know, hear my pain, feel my pain and try to heal it? Is, is God really going to be there for me? And so I, I know for many of us, the question that we're answering uh, the question that we're asking, whether now we turn on our TV, we just saw a hurricane go through the southeast. We just saw a, a, a presidential assassination in, in Haiti. We're seeing uh, just uh, uh, racist groups march through, march through cities. We're seeing so many things happen in, in our society. And, and so we're asking ourselves, God, where are you? Where are you in all that we're seeing? And I want to let you know, I'm, I, I'm not going to answer your question about where is God in all these situations. I, I'm not going to answer that over the next few minutes because it's going to take more than that. But what I will do is point you to the one who will answer those questions for you. And so we, I want to talk to you really briefly about when God seems a little unfair. Not, not only a little bit unfair, but flat out when God just seems unfair. And I want to let you know right now, this first key point, that God has a purpose for your pain. God has a purpose for your pain. I know when you're in the middle of the pain, it just didn't seem like, what's the purpose of this? Why am I going through this? I, I did nothing to deserve it. So what's the purpose? How can God have a purpose for what I'm going through? I, I, I'm suffering right now. Why would God cr create a purpose out of all this? You know, we have all been there. We've all been there. Someone has let us down. We lost something important or someone important. We've been taken advantage of. And life just seems to go the way we want. You know, a loved one gets cancer or people we, we were close to contract COVID-19 and maybe you're on the way to a job interview and all of a sudden what happens? You get a flat tire. And, and all of a sudden you're on the side of the road and you're just looking up saying, really God? Really? Right now? Right now, this, this, this is what's going to happen. God, when I needed you the most, when I thought that you were coming through for me, when I thought you were blessing me with a new opportunity for new blessings, all of a sudden, everything's come to a halt. Really, God? Really, God? Is, is this how you're going to do me? Or, or, or better yet, is this how heartless you're going to be towards me? Go with me now to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to read verses 6 and 7. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7 says this. It says, therefore, I'm, I'm sorry, there is wonderful joy ahead. Even though you must, and I want you to really get this, even though you must endure many trials for a long time. Is that what it says? Or, or, maybe, or maybe it says you, you have to endure these trials for at least half of your lifetime. Is that what it said? Well, what does it say? It says, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. For a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine 
It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Life Words family, anything that's valuable, anything that's valuable is put to a test. I want you to just look at yourself right now. Maybe you're wearing some jewelry. Maybe you have on earrings right now or you have on a, a bracelet or a necklace or if you're like me, you, you have on a, a wedding ring and, and you just look at it right now. No, no matter if it's made of platinum or if it's made of gold or silver, no matter what it's made of, it has value. And the reason it has value is because it was tested. It was literally placed in the fire. It was put through a fire test in order to, to be valuable. When you look at gold, when we look at gold, gold doesn't just start off being this, this beautiful thing. When, when gold is dug out of, out of a mountain, it doesn't look beautiful in the beginning. But what has to happen is all the soil, <clears throat> all the soil needs to be removed. All, all the all the 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 uh, the, the, the minerals and, and, and things that are unnecessary needs to be removed. And then what's left, you may have just a small, tiny flake. And maybe you will find hundreds of those or thousands of those. And once those are brought together, they are melted. They are put into the fire. They are put into the fire to become the beautiful gold that we see. The same thing is done with silver. It is put into a fire, melted and, and put to the test in order to be pure silver. Even oil is put into the fire. When oil comes out of the ground, it's not ready to be used as gasoline. It's not ready to be used to, to lubricate our cars. It's not ready to be used for anything. It's not even ready to be used to power our homes. But the oil that comes up out of the ground has to be refined. That means it has to be put into the fire. It has to go through much heat. It has to go through much pressure in order to be refined. That's why the factories are called refineries. And I want to let you know, Life Words family, that maybe sometimes when it seems like God isn't there and you're just put into the fire, that things just seem to be just too hot to handle all around you. It's just too much pressure. It's too much heat. You cannot handle it. You're suffering through it. You're being placed in the fire in order to be refined. God is refining you, life words family. Only what's valuable, only what's valuable to him gets to be placed in the fire. Only what's valuable to him gets to be refined. So I want you to celebrate today the fact that you get to be refined. And when you come out on the other side of your fire, when you come out on the other side of your test, when you come out on the other side of your refining, You'll be as pure as gold. You'll be even more valuable than gold. You'll be, you'll be shining. You'll, you'll, be, you'll be pure. You'll be beautiful. You'll be valuable, even more valuable. So God, he doesn't cause the pain, but he sure can use the pain. He can use the pain to make us stronger and more valuable. And the second thing I want to share with you today, God is present in your pain. All those times when you're asked, where are you, God? Where are you? It may not feel like he's there, but I want to remind you that God is present in your pain. I want to show you a scripture in Psalm chapter 46, verse 1. Let's read it together. It's a very short verse, but it's one that, you know what? I want you to do this. I want you to take this, this verse, write it on a sticky note, place it on your bathroom mirror or, you know, maybe on your car dashboard, place it somewhere where you see it daily, especially if you're going through something right now. If you feel like right now you're in the midst of the fire, if you feel like right now that you're in the midst of a storm, if you feel like right now that all just things are just falling apart, it may be in your life or what you see around you. It just seems like God just doesn't care. I want you to remember this verse. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength and ever present help. In trouble. It doesn't just say a present. It says an ever present. That means he's always present during times of trouble. It may not feel like it, but I want you to rest on the promise that God is ever present in times of trouble. You see, we want God to give us what we want. 
God wants to show us that he's all we need. You see, I want you to get that. We want God to say, we basically go to God and say, you know what, God, I need you for this. So I need you to show up for this. God, I'm going on this job interview. I need you to show up. God, I'm going to this doctor's appointment and I'm supposed to get my test results. I need you to show up in this manner. But God is trying to tell us, "I'm I'm not here to give you what you want. But I'm here to let you know that I'm all you need because I'm ever present. No matter what the diagnosis is, no matter what the determination on the job situation is, I'm always present. I'm always there through the good times and the bad times. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. And this is Paul talking. He's talking about going through a time of such severe torment that he said it felt like a thorn in his flesh. And then he went on to say, look, I I asked the Lord three times to take this away from me. Just take it away is what he said. He said, I don't want to go through this anymore. This this thorn, this 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 torment that 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 that, that the enemy is putting on me. I I don't want to go through it, God. Take this thorn out out of my flesh. I, 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 I don't want it. Where is that good life that you promised me? Where is that abundant life? I want I want that. I don't want to be going through the fire. I don't want to be suffering. I don't want to be tormented. God, give me that good life, that good life that you called me to. And then in in, in verse nine, here's what God said. Well, here's what Paul said that God said to him. It said, but God said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. That was God's response. He didn't take the thorn out of his flesh. He just said, my grace, my grace is sufficient for you. So often we're telling God how he's supposed to work. God heal me. God change my circumstances. God fix this problem. God relieve this pain. And God is saying no. Yeah, he's, he's saying no. He, but he's also saying no because my grace, because my grace is sufficient. It's so much more. And what is this grace that he's talking about? It's so much more than just forgiveness of our sins. But it's that unmerited favor. We can't do anything to deserve this. Grace is understood. I want you to let's put this on the screen because I really want you to get this. Grace is understood when we go from saying this is what I need to accepting God saying, no, I'm all that you need. I'm what you need. That's what grace is. When we can get to a point to where we can stop saying, God, give me what I need and just accepting that God is what we need. That's the place that we got to get to life words family. This is where this is what Paul had to accept. And once he did, then he could look back on the thorn in his flesh and actually look at it and say, you know what? That thorn was actually a good thing. That thorn, that, 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 that torment that I was going through, that situation that just seemed like it was just putting me through the fire and I was ready to give up and call it quits. That thorn was actually a good thing because now I'm coming out on the other side refined. I'm coming out on the other side stronger. I'm coming out on the other, other side with more faith. I'm coming out on the other side victorious. So I see that thorn in my side as a good thing. And he continued in verse nine and said, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, about that thorn in my flesh. He said, so that Christ's power may rest on me. Verse 10, he said, that is why for Christ's sake. I delight. (laughs) Can you delight in your weakness? Paul said, for for this reason, I delight in my weakness and insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Life for his family. Through the insults. Through the hardships. Through the difficulties, the, the persecutions, the doors slammed in your face. The lies, the cheating, the backstabbing. Can you still delight in those things that make you weak? Just like Paul did. Paul said, I delight in those things that I think had made me weak. So can we start delighting in our weaknesses? Can we start saying, you know what? 
I want to delight in my body ailments because I know that God is my strength. Come on, come on. When, when, when that arthritis in my knee starts acting up, I'm going to delight in that weakness because I know that God is my healer. He's my strength. When, 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 when I just seem like I'm just always exhausted and tired and may, may, maybe just can't make it through the day, I'm going to delight in my weakness because God is my source and he's my strength. He's going to give me enough strength to get through today. Can we be that way? And when we're on that job search, can we delight even though job searches are the worst it just seems like you know we're just setting ourselves up for for disappointment because more doors are shut in our face than do doors that are open we're going to delight in the midst of that job search come on because we know that God is our provider we may have been unemployed for months at a time but somehow there was always food on the table somehow there was always money in the bank somehow there was always gas in the tank somehow the gas the, the lights all Always stayed on because God is our provider. I'm going to take delight in my hard seasons, life words, church family, because breaking me, it is breaking me from being self sufficient. It's breaking me on relying on self, but it is allowing me more to rely on God in, in my hard seasons. I'm going to delight in my lonely seasons because I know my Savior's name is Emmanuel, which means God with us. So I know that even when I feel lonely, I know that God is with me. He's my ever-present help. He's my ever-present provider. He's my ever-present strengthener. He's my ever-present healer. So when I feel weak, when I feel lonely, God is ever-present in my life. So why do bad things happen to good people? Why does God still allow these bad things to happen to good people, Pastor Trey? I hear what you're saying. and I give you a golf clap. It all sounds good. But yet and still, when I turn on the news, I'm seeing bad things happen to good people. And, and even worse, I'm seeing good things happen for bad people. Why is God allowing? It just seems like God is not fair. You're right. God isn't fair. God isn't fair, but he is just. There's a difference between being fair and being just. So we should be extremely glad that God isn't fair. And more than he's more just than fair, because if he was fair, if he was truly fair. What about the sins that he forgiven? If he was fair, we, we would have to t pay the consequences for the sins that we committed and we would get w what we deserve for the sins that we committed. If that would be fair. But because God is just because God is forgiving, because God is ever present, because God's grace that unmerited favor the thing the things that he gives us that we can not do anything to des to earn it or deserve it he gives it freely so be glad that god isn't fair be glad that he is just so and lastly as i close the day life for his family i want to remind you that god has a purpose god has a purpose for your pain and god is present in your pain Want to ask me how I know? Because many of you know that two and a half years ago, Pastor Tasha and I, we, we lost our son, Reggie. And that was the worst, the worst feeling that we could ever go through. And I'll admit, I'm in full transparency. During that moment, the moment that we got the phone call that we've lost our son, at 21 years old, I got angry. I got so angry at God and I said, God, where are you? Our son, Reggie, he was a good kid. He didn't do any harm to anyone. God, why him? God, why are you doing this for us? We moved all the way from Georgia to California to do your will, to plant your church, not our church. But your church, God, we're, we're following you. We're honoring you. We're, we're doing what the disciples did. God, why us? Why? Just, just answer that question, God. Why? And I want to let you know, Life Works family, he answered that question. But he didn't answer it in the way that I expected him to answer. But see, it goes back to what I said. Most times we want God to do things that we want him to do. We want him to show up the way that we want him to show up. We want things the way that we want it. We want it like it's Burger King. We want to have it our way but God says you know what 
my grace is sufficient. Even though, even through the loss of your son, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. And as we started seeing the unmerited favor, the grace when people would tell us how, how our son Reggie affected their lives and how they would share stories about how sweet he was and how much of a blessing he was in their life. And, and they would just love on us. We, we experienced love in, in a way that we've never experienced it before. We wouldn't have experienced it. And then because of our story, because of the joy that God placed in us to be able to continue with our lives, we are able to bless others. And we see other people just telling us how to you do it because of your strength because of the smiles on your faces because of your joy I'm able to go through the same pain and still walk with joy to still trust God to still know that he's still an ever-present help in my life even though I'm in the midst of my fire even though it hurts right now even though I'm in pain right now even though I'm struggling right now even though it's hot in this furnace I know I'm being refined. And on the other side of this fire, on the other side of this oven, uh, on the other side of this pain, I know there's joy. I know there's peace. I know there's understanding. And most of all, I know there's grace. Life Force family, God's grace is sufficient. In times of trouble, in times of heartache, when we watch the news and we just see 30 full minutes of nothing but bad news, nothing but violence, nothing but terror, nothing but unfortunate situations, even in the midst of all that, God's grace is sufficient. If we can get to, a, to the point that we can delight in the things that made us weak. If we can get to the point that we just delight in God, delight in his presence, the delight in his grace, we can get over a lot that's happening in our world. And we will never ask the question again, God, where are you? Because we will see his love. We will see his presence. We will see his grace throughout this world when we can get out of our own way and stop expecting God to show up in the way that we want him to show up. So I want to close today by just making an invitation to you, Life Words family. Maybe you heard this message or maybe you heard this entire series and you've asked some of these questions. God, where are you? God, I can't feel you. God, it just seems like there's just too many rules and restrictions. God, you, I need you to show up on demand the way that I want you to show up. God, I want to believe, but. And so if that's you. If that's you, that you, you just feel like, you know what, I just I really want to go all in for God, but I'm just not feeling it. I want to challenge you right now. I want to challenge you right now to let go of your feelings. As as we hear a lot nowadays, I, I, I want you to I want you to get out your feelings. I want you to get out your feelings and just believe. Just, just, just do, you, you just have to want to. We played a video last week of a young actor, actress saying that you just have to want to believe in God. You just have to want to trust God. And I believe that there's someone out there today, you want to today. And it starts by having a relationship with Jesus. So I want to encourage you now to say yes to inviting Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life. Accepting his gift of salvation and you can do so from right where you are you can say yes to jesus from right where you are you can just put something in the comments now just you can just even put the word yes in the comments below we'll understand what you meant or you can send us a text and, and, and fill out the our digital connect card and let us know that you made a decision to receive jesus today and we're going to celebrate that we're going to reach out to you give some, give you some next steps on your christian journey and we're here to walk with you. We're here to just do life with you. Whatever it is that you need, we're here for you. Because we are, we truly believe that we are the hands and feet of Jesus on the earth. And so we want to let you know through us that God is an ever-present help. And so we're here for you. So if you want to make that decision today, please do so now. Or maybe you want to just have a family of friends who are just going to do life with you, who are going to understand you, who are just going to walk this journey out with you, who are just going to connect with you and build a community 
we want to build a community with you. And I believe that through all of us coming together, we can build a beautiful community called Life Words Church. We can build a beautiful community here in Sacramento. We can build a beautiful community in Vallejo and Utah and Arizona, Texas, uh, Los Angeles and Florida and Georgia. We could build God's community in this nation. And so we invite you now to just become a, a part of this family of friends that we call Life Words Church. And you can do so. Also, by just putting something in the comments, just let us know that you want to be a part of Life Words Church. You can just say, I want to be a part of Life Words Church, and we'll, and we'll celebrate you. Or you can send us a text. Either way works. But we're going to celebrate you for one, but also we're going to give you some practical next steps on your journey. We're going to, we're going to in, invite you to our growth track. And in that growth track, you're going to understand what it truly means to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose and make a difference. So we invite you now to join this family of friends. And so maybe you just are at a point where you just need prayer. We want to be able to pray for you. And so whatever it is that you need prayer for, we want to pray for you specifically. So go to our website, lifewordschurch.com slash prayer, and you can submit a specific prayer request so that we know how to specifically pray for you. And we, we, we read every prayer request. Every Monday morning, we're reading those prayer requests and we're praying for each and every situation. And if we need to reach out to you or we need to pray with you, whether it's on the phone or face to face, we're ready and willing to do that. And so for now, I just want to pray for all of us and then we'll transition to a moment, uh, a final moment of giving. But let's pray together right now. Father in heaven, we just thank you, oh God. Thank you that even though sometimes it feels like we can't feel you or, or, or maybe you're not there or you're not listening. We understand just like it says in Psalm 46, 1, you are an ever present God. You are ever present in our times of trouble, in our times of heartache, in our times of loneliness, in our times of pain, physical or emotional pain. You're there, oh God. And so God, we recognize that you're, de you're there today and we ask for your forgiveness in those moments where we ask why. We, where we ask, where are you, God? We know you're there. And so, God, we recommit to you now, God. We could recommit our faith to you. And we know that you are working things out. Even though we cannot see it, even though we cannot feel it, we know that you're working things out for our good because you've done it in the past, oh God. And so we just invite you now. We, we, we surrender ourselves. We, we, we're getting out of our feelings and we invite you now to take the captain's seat and do what only you can do. We thank you in advance, oh God. We honor you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So at this time, very quickly, because I held you long enough today, we're going to transition to a moment of, 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 of a final form of worship, which is giving. We want you to pra practice regular giving here at Life Words Church. We've been tremendously blessed over the past few weeks and months, and we know that God is going to continue to bless us. And it's only because of God and you that we're able to do the things that we're doing. It's, it's only because of your giving that I'm standing here in the new home of Life Words Church right now. And it's only because of your giving that we're going to be able to do all the remodeling and all the things that need to be done to make this building ready for September 12th, our grand reopening. And it's only because of your giving that we're going to continue to make an impact on the city of Sacramento and the entire Northern California region and other areas of the country as well. We are a giving church and it's only because we have members and friends of Life Words Church who are givers as well. And so we want to invite you now to give to Life Words Church. Practice, practice the, the art and the, and, and, the, and the privilege of tithing. And so you can do so right now from our website. Just go to lifewordschurch.com slash give. You can give any dollar amount, anytime, 24-7, uh, uh, 365. Um, you can also set up reoccurring giving. We, we, we really suggest that you do that. Um, it makes it very easy to give and it's just, it's just like direct deposit. You know, just like we get paid via direct deposit, you can do the same thing uh, as you set up and schedule your, your giving. So thank you all so much for your continuous giving to Life Words Church. We know that God is in, uh, is in a preparation mode of just immensely blessing us and preparing us for growth and I don't when when I say growth I don't uh, 
just just mean physical gro growth. I don't mean crowds, but what I do mean is community. He's going to grow our community and, and grow our influence within the city of Sacramento. So thank you all so very much for your giving today. But at this time, we are done for the day. But before I go, I just want to let you all know that since we wrapped up today's uh, our current series, I'm going to take a little bit of a break, <laughs> just a short break. But hey, we'll still have services, virtual services uh, for the for the next few weeks. So do not do not go anywhere. Continue to log in every Sunday at 10 o'clock right here. We got some incredible guest speakers uh, for you for the next couple of weeks. Uh, Pastor Tasha and I uh, are going to take a little bit of a break because uh, at the end of this month, it is our 21st wedding anniversary. Yeah, I know 21 years, it doesn't look like it. I know we got married when we were 12 years old. So, you know, <laughs> that's, well, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but we're, we're going to have a little bit of a, of a vacation for, for our uh, wedding anniversary. And then plus, uh, we just want to take some time to focus on everything that needs to be done here in, in, in the church building. There's so much remodeling that has to be done. We have to move things from the hub to here, move things from our storage facility into here. So it's going to be just a, a lot of work that needs to be done. And so we just want to be, be able to focus on, on, on that. So we've lined up some, some guest uh, pastors to come and just give you incredible messages uh, for the next couple of weeks. And I'll be back the first Sunday in August to give you a new series. And in August, I want to let you know now that we're going to be preparing for our relaunch. So we, we want to prepare for that relaunch through prayer and fasting. So throughout the month of August, we're going to uh, practice 21 days of fasting and prayer. More information about that will come over the next couple of weeks. Now look, even though I won't be speaking for the next couple of weeks, I'll still be online. I'll still be worshiping with you. So I'm going to be looking to see who's actually watching. <laughs> but no, it, it'll be good to just sit back and enjoy and worship alongside of all you. So all of you. So you'll see, you know, my, my name and my comments show up on the bottom of the screen, just like many of yours. So I'm looking forward to that. So at this time, have a blessed rest of your Sunday and a blessed rest of your week. And we'll see you right back here next Sunday for another worship experience right here at LifeWords Church. God bless you.